Welcome back everybody to Farming Simulator 22, I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode uh, we are going to do uh, end of the month December, and you may also notice that we are back to the widescreen format because Samsung finally uh, got me a new monitor, my original Samsung monitor that I bought back in the summer, uh, about two months after I had it, I think I told you guys this, but in case I didn't. Uh, it went on the fritz, so I had to send it back into Samsung, and then it took them about a month or so to get me a replacement. But it finally came, and so now we're back to widescreen format. I have my head tracker uh, hooked back up because I it wasn't really working very well, you know, with my smaller monitor. So I figured well, I'll just wait till I get the, you know, the widescreen back, and then worry about it then. And so yeah, here we are. And so our chickens are really low on feed, so we're gonna have to. I'll try. Not to jerk my head too much. I know it's um, <laughs> a little bit uh, sudden, uh, but anyway, yeah, we're we're gonna have to actually purchase some grain to to feed these guys, uh, which is fine. You know, not a big deal. Once we get our, um, let's see, right there. Oh no, back a little bit. Maybe a little more. Okay, I think I need to. Trying to get both of them. There we go. Um, once we get into April, we'll be able to harvest our, our big barley field, and then we'll have grain coming out our ears. Um, at that point, I'm going to, once again, I know, I know I've know i kind of hemmed and hawed about this for several years now, actually, in this game, in this series. But um, I want to get a silo. We, we really need to get a silo for grain. I mean, well, we don't really need to because we can still always use the train station, but I just, you know, we, we, we need to get a silo, man. <laughs> That's all there is to it. We need to get our own silo, so um, let's drop that off there. Okay. There is, uh, there isn't really anything else we're going to sell uh, this month. We did all of our selling on December 1st. And, you know, after after I had done that, I got to thinking, well, I should have probably waited till the third so we could get a little more product, but I didn't think about it, so it's all right. It is what it is. Okay, so um, I wonder if I can hold on just a second. All right, yeah, let's try that. That way it's just not whipping all over the place when I move my head to look at something, and we'll see how that works. All right, so let's go into here, and we want to go into here and here. And we're going to buy, uh, I guess wheat, wheat's really the only option. And let's see, that's 1,000 liters. They have, how much do they have right now? Um, what's wrong button? They have, they have 600 liters left. So we got to get through January, February, March, and April. So four months. So I'm thinking we, we should probably buy them about 5,000 liters, and that'll probably get them, that should get them all the way in end April by the time we can harvest our own grain. Okay, yep, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go back to the store here, back to the big bags, and we want to purchase, well, you know what? Uh, that's 4,000. Let's just do four, and, you know, I can always buy another one if I have to. Let's just do four because... And we'll we'll see if that's enough. Okay. There we go. All right. Now this bag handler attachment, this is actually what you're supposed to use it for. <laughs> it's picking up bags like this, but I mean it's just so useful to use for all kinds of different things as you guys have seen many times now. But yeah, this is what you're actually supposed to use it for. Um, is picking up bags like that. Okay, let's go take these over to the chickens. This may, I mean, you never know, but this may be the last time we have to actually buy grain from the store to feed the chickens, but we'll see. The problem with me putting all of my grain in my grain mill is that I can't pull it back out again, you know, if I need to, so... There we go. Dumping it on the ground. We have to imagine there's probably an auger or something down there just putting the grain up into the silo. 
Good. And that brings the chickens up to $45.99. And we'll keep an eye on that. And like I said, if we have to buy one more bag before April, we can we can do that. Not a big deal. Okay, so uh, the cows are in good shape. I just actually topped them off right before I started the recording. So they're completely full. Uh, the sheep are pretty good. They're, in another month or two, we'll have to give us more hay, but that's not a big deal. And so our animals are in good shape. Let's take a look at our productions here. So all of the greenhouses are pretty good. And if we look down here, our dairy uh, could use some milk. And we still have quite a bit of sorghum. Well, not quite a bit. It's almost gone. And then that's it for the flour. But we, we, you know, we had a bunch of excess flour that we were able to sell. Plus the bakery is still chocked full of flour. And then, of course, we have the uh, both wool and cotton. In fact, I'm sure we have some wool bales to move. Let's go grab those now while we're still in the telly. And, uh, and then, yeah, so just wool and milk. Those are really the only two chores we have to do. And then I think we'll be ready to move on into January. All right, guys, we're back. Um, we are going to actually get started uh, setting up some auto drive routes before we go into January. Um, you know, so we so we can use them. Uh, so that's what we're actually going to do here in the next part of the video. Um, these take a while to set up. I've messed with them a little bit off camera. So um, I'm probably just going to show you the first couple of routes. So you get the basic idea, but then I'm going to probably set most of these up off camera. Otherwise, it's going to take a really, really long time. Uh, but we'll just play that by ear and see how it goes. All right. So auto drive. Um, basically, what auto drive does is it allows you to set up pathways, predefined pathways for the AI to drive. What we're going to use it for is we're going to use it to set up routes that go into our property to load points like the pallet warehouse and the, the you know, the bales and that sort of thing. And then routes to go to the drop off locations. Um, so that that process is more auto uh, automated and I'm spending less time doing the driving myself in order to, you know, speed up that process. Okay, uh, so let's do this. Um, if this is the auto drive um, box thingamadoodle here. And if you click on this little sign here, it brings up these little red spline thingamadoodles. And that basically shows what the built in pathways are for the AI to uh, the AI traffic to drive. So this is just what's built into the Elm Creek map. And we can actually tap into those and, and make use of those, which we are going to do. Uh, there are a couple of things, though, that I want to set up first in terms of settings. So we'll click on the settings button. First thing is we want to make sure that these guys are going around the corner at a little bit slower speed, because if they have a full load, uh, they could tip things over. So let's knock that down about 70%. Um, the unload fill level, I'm going to bring that up to 99%. And I'm just trying to see what else we might want to change here. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to leave all that stuff the way that it is for the moment. Let's go to user settings. Uh, we don't want to see next path because that gets a little bit irritating. And uh, we do not want to... Uh, or we want to raise this up to above tractor so we can see the little nodes easier. All right. Uh, we do not want to auto connect anything. I want to do that manually because I'll have a little more control over it. And I want to use folders. I don't want collision detection on because that has uh, problems. We'll have we'll have them put the turn signal on 20 meters out and we'll click apply. And that saves all of those settings. Perfect. Okay. So. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to start the man and we're using the man with the reefer attached because, you know, that's what we're going to be using when we're hauling pallets because we're going to focus on getting the pallets set up first. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get in position here. Uh, get the camera kind of where I want it, which is sort of above the uh, the truck. Okay, and then we're going to click this record button, and what it's going to do is it's going to record the path that we drive. And so basically this is the truck driving into the yard and getting ready to pick up a load of pallets. We'll just kind of drive it along here. And the idea here is we want to pull it 
right up next to the load area with the front of the reefer just a little bit in front of the load uh, the load area I'm gonna go one more till it creates one more thing okay I'm gonna stop recording and the truck is now currently connected to the last little node there uh, we can't see it at the moment but there's a little red line in fact here if we back up you see the little red line going from the truck to the last one so that means that's the one we're currently uh, selected if we back up further then it goes to this one and it just kind of keeps jumping from one node to the next uh, so we want to be on this node here okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this button and we're gonna create a target so targets are basically where the AI drives to. So the, the little red nodes are like the waypoints, but the target is where it actually is going to. So you have to have the targets so that actually has something to drive to. Uh, so the nodes are like, this is the path you drive along, the target is this is where you drive to. So we're gonna call this um, pallet warehouse load. And of course, you know, so the name of that target helps define what it does. So we know exactly, you know, what it does. Okay, now we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna just click this little button here. And, uh, well, actually, sorry. First of all, we have to tell it to where to go. So that's our first target. And then it should drive to pallet warehouse load. Okay, that's actually really pretty good. Um, yeah, that's actually perfect. Because, um, you know, we want the edge, the front edge of the reefer right at the front edge of the load area. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to open this up and we're just going to test it and make sure that it's close enough to load everything. I'm pretty sure that it is just by looking at it, but we want to test it to make sure. All right, so let's go over here and we're going to offload. Uh, let's do close. Okay, so we'll change the output mode to storing. But that, that's actually really, really almost perfect, I think. But we'll double check it anyway, just to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to press a Shift R. And yep, there it goes. Okay, so it loads all the pallets. Perfect. Um, I have not been able to figure out a way to get auto drive to automatically load pallets. Uh, you know, using our universal auto load thingy here. But we... We will be able to, I think, get it to automatically load bales, but pallets I haven't been able to figure out. Okay, so let's set the clothing uh, back to distributing so it doesn't pop it right back out again. And then we'll just offload it and let it go back into the warehouse. Beautiful. Okay, so now let's go here and let's tell it once again to drive to the pallet warehouse load to target. So we get it back in position. Beautiful. Okay. We're gonna turn this off and hop out of here. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna move our bridge over. We're gonna slide it over so that once uh, the truck is loaded, it can just go straight on out and wrap around and get back out on the road. Now, the game, if I was doing this for real, what I would do is I would make sure that this bridge was unanchored. I'd hook a chain up to it on the tractor and I'd just drive it down a little bit and pull it over, okay? But um, that's uh, but unfortunately, you know, the game isn't going to let me do it that way. Uh, it's going to make me remove it. It's not going to give me any money for it. And then it's going to make me buy a brand new one. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to play that game. No, sir, Rebob. We're, we're going to basically give ourselves $5,000 because that's what this costs. Um, and effectively, what we're doing is we're just moving the one we already have. But before we do that, we're going to need to get this tree out of the way. So let's just go to delete objects and get rid of that tree. Okay, and then we're going to uh, just run out here for a moment, get into, um, oh, actually, hold on. Let's give ourselves 5000 bucks to buy that bridge back, essentially. Okay, we're going to get into the build menu, and uh, if I click on this, notice that I can sell it, but I get $0, okay? But that's the only way I can get rid of it, because we, we need, need it out of the way, because we're essentially moving it over. Okay, let's go to here and go to here, and um, I want to get rid of just a couple of these bushes that are going to be in the way of uh, where the bridge is going to be. That could probably stay where it is, and um, yeah, I want to get rid of this grass too. 
Okay, that should be good enough for that. Okay, let's go to Decoration Others and find the Lizard... A $5,000 Lizard Bridge, which is this one here. And I'm actually going to flip it around this way and pull it out to almost to the edge of the field and basically more or less center it on the truck. So that's pretty good right about there, I'd say. Okay, cool. Now let's go to landscaping. Let's go to softening and just kind of get rid of that a little bit. Okay, that's good. Uh, we're going to need to raise the ground up here. Soften that. Just tap the raise a little bit right there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, we want it to be relatively smooth for the truck to go along. All right, let's just drive over that and see what it does. A little bit of a bump, but not too bad. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, so let's get... <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Um, uh, okay, hold on. That was a bit bit rough there. Of course, we, we took it at pretty high speed, though, too. Okay, let's go with that. I think that'll work. Okay, so let's get the truck back in position. So we'll bring it back over here. And it should hook up with the, the route here. If we turn this back on, we can see that it's got the little red line connecting to that. And then we can just tell it to drive back to the pallet warehouse load to target. Beautiful. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, an, another route, or actually we're just going to add on to this route uh, that's going to pull out across the bridge and then wrap back around and get back out on the road. Okay, so let's pull uh, forward just a little bit here. And then we're going to hit the record button. And it basically just pulls out and then goes right about to here. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop recording. And we want to go back over to here. Um, here, I'm going to have to actually drive back over there because I can't see it well enough. Okay, so we want to connect the last node on the first route to this one, because right now they're not connected. Um, so I just click on here and click on there, and that connects that up. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, so now let's back up this way. And we're going to go right to here. And we're going to click the end of here hover our cursor over this guy and then use the mouse wheel to create a nice smooth curve going back out on, on uh, out onto the road um and that's actually kind of a sharp corner we could it might be better to to use that one yeah let's use that one okay and then we're also at the, uh, gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna, again, grab this uh, and put one here in case we wanna go the other direction at some point in the future, which I'm sure we will. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to um, well, here, yeah, let's just leave that the way it is for the moment. It should 
I just want to make sure the back end of the trailer is going to clear the bridge, but it looks to me like it will be fine following that line. Good. Okay, so let's get up to here now. And the not all of these nodes that are built into the map are connected. I'm not really sure why that is, um, but they're not. So we're going to have to connect um, from here to there. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could... Uh, we could go to here to here and you know do this um and we might but but the thing is is you know we want this to kind of swing wide otherwise it, you know the back of the trailer is gonna come over the back of that so the other way we could do it is we could do it you know a little more gradually and then manually adjust the nodes or we could record that turn and I think what I want to do is the third thing I want to record the turn so I can turn it the way it should be turned if that makes sense and then we'll, and then we just join them up okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be right about in the center of this road here and we'll get just uh, actually I'm gonna get back more over to here okay so let's click record and we're going to just pull out and pull wide like we would do until we come right to about here. Okay, we'll stop the recording and we'll connect this to there. Good. And that gives us a nice wide turn so that, you know, the reaper's not going to be running over the top of the curb, hitting the street light, that sort of thing. Now, I don't know if this little spline's going to cause problems or not. I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, and if it becomes apparent later on that it's causing us issues, then I'll fix it at that point. Now, I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to move it over here so it's a little more gradual as, it, as he turns, you know, as he turns into here. Excellent. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, go from here back into our uh, the start of our our driveway. Okay, so that's pretty easy. We're just going to click on you. We're going to hover over you, and again use the mouse wheel to make a nice little round turn into the driveway. Good. Let's do the same thing coming off of um, this other lane. Yeah, this should work. Okay. So click on you and join to you. Uh, did that work or is it too far away? No, it worked. Okay, yeah. See, we, we got the green line going all the way there. Okay. Now, let's pull this way. And we, we also, if we're in the far lane, we also want to be able to, because right now we just did one that comes in off of the inside lane. Um, did we? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to click here. And we're going to also go to here and, again, make a nice little smooth turn into the driveway. Good. So that means that we can turn into the driveway from either one of these lanes on the road. Now, we want to do the same thing from the other side as well, okay? So what we're going to do here is uh, if we want to turn in from this lane, we just go from here to here. And, oh, no, we can't. Sorry, we can't do that. Oh, darn it, I, I pushed the wrong button. We can't do that because that is still go in the other direction. We have to do it from this side. Okay, so escape. How do I get... Oh, I just click on it again. Okay, so when we're coming from this side, if we want to turn in, we do that. And likewise, if we're coming from this side, we do that. Good. Okay, so hopefully that made sense, but basically we're just creating ways to from all four of these lanes to pull into our driveway okay good now what we're going to do is we're going to pull back into here and i'm going to create 
I'm going to create a temporary route just to test this. So we're going to go past pallet warehouse load. And we're going to start a recording here. We're going to pull over to about here. Okay, we'll stop this recording. Actually, we don't need to stop the recording, but we're going to just call this uh, test target. This is temporary. I'm not going to keep this here. Okay, and then I should have kept the recorder running, actually, but that's all right. So then this will just come over to here. And, well, actually that telephone pole is going to be in the way, probably. Let's see if we can get it to work anyway. So if we go here into here and wrap it around this way, we'll see if that works. Okay. So we need to connect a test target to you. If I would not have turned the recording off, then that would have connected automatically, but I, I just wasn't thinking. And we need to connect this one up over here, too. Good. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get over here. All right, we're going to start here, and we're going to tell him to drive to pallet warehouse load target. All right, now we're going to tell him to drive to test target. So far, so good. And then we're going to tell him to go back to pallet warehouse. Can't reach pallet warehouse load. Okay, that's probably because I screwed something up. If we delete this by pressing um, Alt... And then connect that there. Will it work now? Hmm. Okay. What if we pull it forward past test target? Um, okay. I... I might have missed something somewhere. Let's... That is connected into there. And it should take it on to the main route. Hmm. Okay, something... I did something wrong. I'll have to figure it out. I... Th I, I want to say it might be this one that's causing the, the problem. <sighs> okay, so what if we... What if we delete this? I kind of hesitate to delete this one because this is the one that kind of just came with the game and instead connect it up there. Oh, this has an X on it. I think that means that one of these isn't connected. Can we delete that? Okay, that show's connected, that show's connected. So this should theoretically work now. Um, let's go back and try it again. Okay. So it should drive to test target. And then now we'll go to pallet warehouse load. 
Ah, there it goes. Okay, yeah, so there was something funky with the, the link up by the intersection there that was making this not work quite right. Um, if he's going to end up hitting that... Oh, he just barely missed it. <laughs> we could adjust that path a little bit, you know, make it a little wider, too, if we had to. But we should be in business now because, um, it, you know, it, it obviously would, would have stopped if it wasn't linked up. So, yeah, I, something just got messed up with that link there. Okay, so it should start doing the wide turn. That looks pretty good. And then it should pull into the driveway. And go to the pallet load area. Okay, cool. So I think uh, we're off to a good start here. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to create paths to the cell point. So we're gonna need to create a path to Mama Joe's uh, diner, fast food restaurant, Mama Joe's market, Mama Joe's um, restaurant, Red Bowling, Johnson's Farmer's Market, etc., etc. So what I think I'm going to do as far as that goes is I don't know if I'm going to create them all at once. I think we'll wait until we figure out who's going to who's got the best prices and we'll set it up at that point in time. Um, so we're going to do this for, you know, for the pallets, of course, but we're also I'm also going to set up a similar thing for for the bales, too. And the bales in theory, the bales, we should be able to automatically have the bales load. And the reason I say that is because if we look at here, um, there is a mode for, for universal auto load that will automatically pick up bales. And I know that that works because I've actually used it before. Unfortunately, there isn't one for automatically pick up pallets, um, but there is for bales. So what that means in theory is we should be able to pull in to our, um, here, let's turn this off. So the idea is we'll, we'll have the, um, we'll see now there's another consideration here too, actually, now that I think about it. Okay, the idea, though, is that we would pull into here, uh, prob probably with the flatbed trailer, I guess. And you can, you know, set up auto drive to back up, too. So we back into here, and then we unload the bales from the storage, and then it should automatically load the bales right onto the thing, and then we send them along the path. Now, I'm not sure how it's going to work, though, um, with unloading. I know that um, unloading works for grain, but I'm not sure if it works for for bales. I think it will, but we won't really know until we, we try it. Um, and the other thing I want to test is, does it work with the flatbed? Does it work with the auto loader? Uh, you know, the Anderson auto loader you know, too. So, so we'll set up a route, you know, that goes over here to the VGA and, you know, the route will pull into here like so. And then we'll see if we can, you know, get it to offload. Of course, we'd have to offload on um, the other side in that case. But we wouldn't be using the reefer for this anyways. We'd be using either the flatbed or the Anderson motor. So I just got to kind of test those things out and try and figure out, you know, what the best way is going to be to do that. But if nothing else, we can certainly get auto drive to do all of the driving and staging for us. And we, if we have to just, you know, teleport to the vehicle to do the unloading and offloading, that's still going to save us a lot of time uh, from before where I was actually having to do all the driving and stuff too. So 
should be good. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to work on that stuff, and I will bring you back um, when I'm ready to either show you, you know, some new stuff about AutoDrive, or I'll just get it all set up, and then I'll show you what I did uh, before we move into January and then, you know, start the January sales. But this should be fun. I I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be just a neat, uh, you know, new thing for us to do in the game and hopefully, you know, save us some time. And, you know, AutoDrive can be used in conjunction with course play, and you can really set up some pretty elaborate um, instructions for the AI and, and make it, you know, get it to start looking even more like an actual, you know, you have real people helping you on the farm. And, you know, I become more of a farm manager and have workers doing, you know, the bulk of the work. So we'll kind of move in that direction. Uh, how far we move in that direction, I'm not really sure, but uh, we'll figure it out as we go. But I'm going to let you go here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.